Hi guys, me again, back with some more nutritional advice. Um, omega-3 fats. If we go back 10 or 15 years, uh, not many people were really aware of what omega-3 fatty acids were uh, and what health benefits they had. Um, pushing omega-3 fats into the consciousness of the public uh, is largely a result of uh, the work of writers such as Udo Rasmus and Mary Enig, uh, who've written popular books on the subject. Uh, and now, uh, over the course of the last 10 years, it's, it's started to become uh, uh, more widely known of what omega-3 fats are uh, and their beneficial effects. And many people, if you go and talk to them, uh, will have some awareness of, of the ability uh, of omega-3 fats to have uh, health benefits. Uh, and many people will actually have modified their diets to incorporate, for example, fish oil capsules or, or fish in order to be able to, uh, to, to benefit from the metabolic effects of omega-3 fats. Um, now this has generally been good. Uh, I think those people will, uh, will have health benefits from, from consuming the fatty fish or the fish oil capsules. But, but I just wanted to make a quick video uh, to give a quick caveat. Um, because we have to remember that omega-3 fats are not some miracle uh, fat that have uh, physiological effects unless we consider uh, the omega-6 fats as well. Um, the omega-3 fats and the omega-6 fats have a strange relationship. Uh, there needs to be a balance between the two groups of fatty acids. Uh, it's not fully known what the exact ratio between the two fatty acid groups should be in the diet. Uh, and it probably varies uh, between people uh, and therefore it's very difficult for scientists to, to make an accurate estimate. Current uh, recommendations are to consume roughly 3 grams of omega-6 fatty acids uh, for every 1 gram of uh, omega-3 fatty acids. Um, that means that if you consume uh, just linoleic acid, which is the essential fatty acid belonging to the omega-6 fatty acid group, you would need to consume three grams of linoleic acid for every one gram of alpha linoleic acid, which is the, uh, the essential fatty acid that belongs to the omega-3 fatty acid group. Um, now the problem is that this becomes very complicated when you start to consume fish uh, because uh, fish contains metabolites of alpha linoleic acid and those metabolites appear to have a much stronger effect uh, in the body. So you may actually need less than the one gram of uh, alpha linoleic acid if you consume it uh, as fish oils uh, and that means uh, uh, the fish oils will be either docosapentaenoic acid or docosahexaenoic acid. So really what I'm trying to say is the exact ratios are not known. However, what I wanted to point out was that if you overconsume the omega-3s, and it is possible to do that, you will end up in no better uh, health uh, uh, place than if you were cons over consuming the omega-6s. The reason for this is that the parent compound uh, of the omega-6 fatty acids, linoleic acid, is converted to a compound called gamma linolenic acid. And gamma linolenic acid is converted to another compound called dihomo gamma linolenic acid. And dihomo gamma linolenic acid is the parent compound for a group of anti-inflammatory uh, compounds called the series uh, 1 icosanoids. Now the series 1 icosanoids are very important because they have very, very strong uh, anti-inflammatory effects. If we look at the omega-3 fatty acids, um, they're converted to the series 3 icosanoids. And those icosanoids are actually quite neutral. They don't really have anti-inflammatory effects, apart from the fact that they can block the pro-inflammatory icosanoids that are produced from another omega-6 fatty acid called arachidonic acid. Now that's very complex, so let me just go over that again. The actual anti-inflammatory icosanoids come from the omega-6 family of fatty acids. The omega-3 fats actually produce very neutral uh, icosanoids that don't have uh, very strong anti-inflammatory effects. The actual role of the omega-3 fatty acids when we put them in our diet in the correct ratio is actually to inhibit the production of pro-inflammatory compounds. 
So if we want to, if we want to benefit from the anti-inflammatory effects of essential fatty acids, it's the omega-6 fats that we need. And therefore, we have to be very careful that we don't over-consume the omega-3 fats to the detriment of the omega-6. Because if we have too few omega-6 fatty acids in our diet, we get the same pro-inflammatory effects as if we have too few omega-3 fats. And I've been trying in my videos over the, over the course of the last year to emphasize that the, the, the essential fats need to be in a correct balance. It's not about consuming more omega-3s. It's not about consuming uh, less omega-6s. If we take those two uh, statements in isolation, they're meaningless. What we really need to do is to consume a balance between the omega-6s and the omega-3s. And the point about this uh, that really needs emphasizing is that scientists don't know, nutritionists can't tell you what that balance needs to be because it will be different for every single person. Everyone will have their own biological needs and that will depend not only on their genetics but also the environment they're in, what other foods they're eating, how high their insulin levels are, what their vitamin and mineral status is like and therefore the only way uh, to achieve a correct balance is through experimentation. Um, Really what I wanted to, 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 to drill home in this video is that uh, many people uh, look at the omega-3 fats, they see they have health benefits, they take their omega-3 fatty acids. Uh, and really I wanted to highlight that the omega-6 fatty acids are just as important. Linoleic acid is an essential fatty acid, just the same way as alpha linoleic alpha linoleic acid is an essential fatty acid. Those two, the omega-6 and omega-3 essential fatty acids are required in a correct balance and it's that balance that brings health. If you over consume the omega-3s you will still get an omega, you will still get, you will get an omega-6 uh, fatty acid deficiency uh, and that will produce just as detrimental health consequences as if you over, as if you under consumed the omega-3s. So really you need to find your own balance. Uh, now, if you if you are consuming fish oils, um, as I said, icosapentaenoic acid and docosahexaenoic acid may have a stronger uh, effect in the body uh, compared to alpha linolenic acid, and this is partly to do, due to the fact that many uh, people uh, of Western European descent actually have a deficiency in the converting enzyme that prevents them using alpha linolenic acid efficiently. Uh, if you are taking fish oils, it might be worth looking at a supplement of starflower oil or uh, evening primrose oil uh, because those two compounds contain the gamma linolenic acid that you require to produce the dihomo gamma linolenic acid, uh, which is then converted to the series 1 icosanoids. And the best way to take the omega-6 fatty acids, uh, if you feel you do have a deficiency of omega-6 fats, is probably in the preformed gamma linolenic acid form uh, as evening primrose or, or starflower oil. Um, so I hope that was useful. Uh, don't forget the omega-6s, they're just as important uh, as the omega-3s and it's the balance in your diet uh, that will bring you health. Um, if you have any comments on this video, uh, if you have any personal experience of taking supplements of either omega-6 or omega-3s that you want to, to pass on, please put them uh, in the comments box below this video. Uh, and as always, uh, if you ask a question, I will try to, to answer it and get back to you uh, as soon as I can.